Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Hello and welcome to Series 4 of Property Elevator. In this show, we give budding developers the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property professionals, or who we call our property investment angels. These are John Howard, our chair angel, Helen Chorley, our number cruncher, Nicholas Woolwork, our creative thinker, Paul Mahoney, our investor from Down Under, and Ranjan Bhattacharya, our YouTuber. Now, we know that property is not a game for the faint-hearted. With hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake, yes, the rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very wrong very quickly. This is why it's fantastic that not only could you walk away with the financial backing of one of our angels, but you also get their expert knowledge, which we know is just as important. So with that being said, let's do some deals. If you can do that for that sort of money, then um, you better come do some for me. I don't think there is enough in it to keep it as a, as a long-term buy to let. Why is she selling that so cheaply? Yeah. That sounds ridiculously below market value, which is great if, you can, if you've got the deal. If you, it turns out you actually can't do it for this for whatever reason, then you're going to be quite upset about that because it's going to start eating into your returns. And that is exactly what Investor Relations is about. So it's episode one of series four here today. We have got a lot of nervous, but very excited pitchers ready and waiting to go for our angels. Let's take you to the first deal. Alana, welcome to Property Elevator. Hello, thank you, nice to see you. And tell us a little bit about the deal that you've brought then for our angels. So it's a small block of six flats. I already own three of the flats in the block. Okay. And I want to purchase the other three and the other share of the freehold. Excellent. Okay. So it sounds quite a simple... Very straightforward. Yeah. You know yep. the area well. You've obviously got your, your three already there. Yep. And I've been a landlord in the area for over 17 years. Right. Um, so I've got a really good grasp of the local market. Excellent. And so how much are you after as an investment today? £400,000. Great, great. All right, well, good luck. Thank you very much. Is there anyone in particular that you'd like to do the deal with or would you be happy with, with anybody? I think, actually, I, they've all got the expertise that I'm looking to tap into, so I'd be very happy to speak to any of the investors. Yeah, OK, great. Well, I've got my fingers crossed for you. Thank you very much. Best of luck in there. Just be yourself, relax, take your time, and I'm sure it will be great. Lovely, thank you. Alana, thank you so much for coming in today. We're all excited to hear what you have to say about this deal. Um, over to you. I live in a town called Hartford, which is about 30 minutes away from here. And I am a professional landlady. I've got a number of properties and I've been doing that for over 17 years. So I'm very well acquainted with the local rental market. Brilliant. This property here uh, was converted into six flats in the 80s. Um, I own three of the flats, three of the bigger flats in this property, and another lady owns the other three and the other 50% share of the freehold. Now, she has agreed with me to sell me her three flats and her share of the freehold. I'm here today looking for an investment of £400,000 so that I can complete on this deal. It's currently set up as six flats, um, and they've all been rented out Consistently, I've had li literally no voids in 17 years, wow. bar maybe a couple of weeks Fantastic. of wow. somebody coming in, somebody going out. However, I haven't increased the rents in several years, so I know that they're massively under-rented, that okay. those rents all need to go up probably between two, 250 to 300 pounds a month per okay. flat. Okay. Now, I had a flood uh, in this property in October so currently it's completely empty. All of the tenants have moved out and gone elsewhere. I am in negotiations with the insurance company to have the property put back under the cost of the insurance. Yep. I believe that I will continue to rent it as six individual letting units and maximise on the rents. However, 
you may well have better knowledge or uh, uh, you may know things that I don't know and there may be a, a different avenue to take that would be ultimately more profitable. Next door went on the market uh, on the 21st of January of this year mm -hmm. for £1,350,000 and ha is today sold. I owe £270,000 for my flats. I've negotiated to purchase from the other uh, lady party £390,000. So my combined costs are 660, I believe. Yep. So I think there's a lot of profit in this building. Why is she selling that so cheaply? Yeah. That sounds ridiculously below market value, which is great if, you can, if you've got the deal, but... Well, she's a little bit older than me okay. by a decade or so. Uh, she doesn't live in the so area. 31 then? Yes. <laughs> and uh, she, know, she doesn't live in the area. It's very inconvenient for her. And bearing in mind that we've had a flood um, and they discovered asbestos in the building. So all of the ceilings have been taken out. All of the okay. flooring has been taken Is that up. across the whole block, yeah. all six flats are uh, currently... Bar one um, okay. that wasn't affected by, yep. the, by the water. We've agreed this figure because she wanted to go to auction. Right. And uh, she said, let's sell it for 750. And I'm like, well, if we hit 750, it's got to be sold. I'm, I'm not happy with that. I think that's too little. Um, at, at the very least, it's got to be 800. And then I thought, I need to do more due diligence on this because I wasn't feeling comfortable. Uh, are they all one bedroom flats? No. Um, so we've got, this is a one bedroom flat. Yep. This is a large studio, which could easily be a one bedroom Should flat be one because, bedroom because, because of this room here. This is a studio. Uh, oh. And then there's, so there's one, two, three one bedroom flats and three studios. But certainly that could be four one bedroom flats and two studios quite easily. Okay. And, and which of those are hers? Which of the, the studios in the one beds? Okay, so the other lady owns uh, this front ground floor um, and two properties at the back. So she owns a one bed and two studios. Okay. The, so you mentioned you're looking for 400,000 investment from us. What's your proposition with regards to what we get for that? Given that you already own three of the six and the three of the six are up for sale. Are, you, are we buying into this building as a whole or are we helping you buy the new three? Well, I guess I'm, you're helping me buy the new three yeah. and the remaining freehold and then your expertise on deciding what to do with it. The best yeah. manoeuvre. Best manoeuvre. Yeah. I think some of that, uh, some of that um, manoeuvre might depend on what your tax situation is. Right, um, I have spoken to my accountant Good. about this. Good, excellent. Currently I live with my partner and I don't actually have a residential property, I sell right. it. Um, so I could make that into one property, go and live there and then sell it with no capital gains. Is it worth more as one unit or the six? Because generally people buy the bigger to make into smaller because that the sum of the parts adds up to yep. more, more than the one. I and, and to, to add to that question, what was the neighbouring property? Was it one house or was it six flats? One house. Same house. Right, so it's a so different proposition then. Yeah, and it has got a large extension. Has it? Yes. Right, I'm glad you mentioned that. Mm. Okay. The I'd also problem, just look sorry. into that tax advice. Yeah. From yeah. my understanding is whilst ever that property is being used as a buy to let, you are liable for capital gains tax. So even if you moved into this property now, you would only save for the period that it's your primary residence you would still be liable for the period that it was an investment. That's interesting, Paul. That, I didn't know that. That's my understanding too. So that is an accountant correct. signing that off. We're not giving any... Well, uh, I'm not an accountant, but that, that's advice. my understanding. And I have, I've asked that question multiple times. Yes. Now, Paul, yeah, you're absolutely correct. There is another yeah. issue as well, which is if you convert it back to a house, you'd have to go for planning permission to convert it back mm. to yes. six flats. And I doubt whether you'd get 15, 16 square metre flats under the current regime. Like I say, there may be things that I don't know. I haven't explored the HMO. Um, oh, don't talk to me, please, Alana, about HMOs. Okay. I mean, <laughs> well, he's just ruled himself out then, hasn't he, okay. Alana? Uh, at the end of the day, we're all sick. To, well, I'm certainly sick to death hearing about people doing HMOs. Uh, others in this room make a lot of money out of HMOs. So I, I'm. It, it's not an area I've got any expertise no, in. It's me not neither. something me that neither. Was, was on my mind. I gave it up mind. a long time ago. What's your main goal with this property? Is it to make as much money as possible from it? I had been going down the route that I would buy the other three. I'd have it under one stewardship, one ownership. Yeah, sure. I would refurbish it to as 
not ridiculous quality, but appropriate I, levels I, it's, for it's the area. It's a good quality area, Hartford. And so then go for that. really good rents and, and hold it for at least five years. Now, this is unusual. Ranjan has got his calculator out, so he's <laughs> obviously serious. And it's close enough. I mean, he only does 10 miles from his home. So this is close enough nearly for him. I'm he not saying where he lives because we wouldn't want all the paparazzi there and everything else. But um, <laughs> OK. I can fund the whole purchase. We, we put yours in at £400,000. So we, I, we put it into an, uh, a joint venture company. So I will, I will buy your side out. I will buy your other occupier's side out. So we own it together. Yep. I'll then pay for all the refurbishment Don't. as one property. Okay. With an extension that we have to. Okay. And then we'll, we'll sell it for 1.3, 1.4 million on the open market as one house. You don't need to worry about renting and having voids in it. That's all gone. I'm offering you the opportunity of sitting back, relaxing, working with me to our mutual benefit where you put no more money in anything, you get the money back that you can reinvest in something else prior to us then refurbishing and then sharing the profit 50-50 with me. That's my offer to you. Thank you. Thank you. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Well, you see, John hasn't been listening because you don't want to sit back. You're an active landlord. This is your business. You don't need someone else to come and run it for you. You need some expertise to help you with some of the gaps, possibly some expertise in the funding, certainly some expertise in designing the building that will maximise your income over the next five years. And you've said you want to hold it for five years. You don't want to sell it. I think Alana said, if you don't mind me saying, that she's open to other suggestions. So don't be so presumptuous. Before us rudely interrupted, Alana, I think that I could offer you all of that. I'd be an ideal business partner with you. We've developed over 120 studio-like um, blocks. We build, build to rent blocks just like this currently building 32 units in Reading. Um, so this is exactly what I do, is maximising this kind of space for, to its full potential. And I'd help you as much as you needed help with, and I'd step back if you wanted me to, and I could mentor you through it if you wanted to be more hands-on. So that's what I'd be able to offer you, uh, on a 50-50 basis. So what, so what are you offering? On a 50-50 basis. Very, it's very vague to what you're actually offering. I'm offering any money needed to top this deal up, and a 50-50 on the profit share. Putting your site in, putting what? your site in at, at four hundred as well. So say, do, same offer as John, but I would work very differently. How do you get the profit though if it's not being sold? Exactly. I'm happy to stay in the deal, refinance the end, and stay in the deal for as long as you want. Okay. There's that much juice in it. Yeah. Existing, that refinancing you get it so, all out right. It all I'd sounds. Sell if you want to sell, I'd stay in if you want to sell. It all sounds no a bit messy to me, Nicholas. I'll just let you know, I'm struggling to come up with anything kind of more creative. The, these are the creative ones. I'm, I'm the, 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 the doer. I'm the pr pragmatist. These are the creative ones. Yeah. And I think you can get much cheaper. I think you already probably have cheaper money than, than I would be prepared to do. So it's not for me, but thank you for coming along today. And I think you've got two great options already and there may well be more. OK, thank you okay. very much. Yeah, look, I, I was going to say exactly the same thing as what John said, to be honest. Um, put the whole thing in, refurb it, sell it, and then we're out. I'd be happy to do what Nick said as well, you know, refurb it, refinance the money back out, and I'm out of it, or stay in it, really. It, you know, it either, either would work. Um, I, I, similar to what Helen said, I'm struggling to think of anything, a different offer to what they've offered, but I'd be happy to offer what either John or Nicholas offered. Ranjan. I don't think there is enough in it to keep it as a as a long-term buy-to-let for a partner to be involved because the yield will be sub 5%. I don't think this is a convert to a single house. Um, and some of the units may be difficult to sell on as individual flats too small. Uh, because they're too small. To be perfectly honest and blunt, I think this is actually a very good proposition for you to buy those three flats 
refurb them all as rental flats and do this yourself. I think to make an offer as a JV, I think um, um, there's not enough in it to share. That's my view and assessment of this. So Alana, you've got three offers. You've got one from the most experienced person huh. in total. You've got Nicholas, who's very experienced in doing micro units, which are now not allowed anymore under the new government rules. And with Paul, um, he's just jumped on the back of myself and Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The summary job. Exactly the summary. what we said. You know, you could anybody can follow Look, someone else I who's think, very experienced I think the because he knows is... he knows ultimately that I know what I'm doing, uh, and he's just copied. <laughs> Here we go. He's just he's just pasted, paste and sent. Is it paste? Alana, What's the if, word? if John would yeah. take copy, a copy breath, and copy and paste, copy, John. If John would just take a breath, Alana, he's just copied and pasted my. I went first, <laughs> if you remember. I'm the one who's confident He's got about big lungs. working together. <laughs> so they're the three offers you have. Alana, so the reality is all three of us have done this type of thing before. Each of any one of us would be a good partner for you. The offers are pretty much the same. So you just need to pick someone. Quite frankly, I would say yes to any one of you. <laughs> so having to choose yes. um, is really difficult. Yeah. How about this? I'd be willing to share it with Nick because I know John doesn't share. <laughs> Wow, okay. Would that be complicated though? I would ha be happy to do that. So you've actually got four offers now. You could take Paul and myself individually or together or John. So that actually is four different offers. My instinct says take your offer. Thank you. Is that a definite yes? Yes. Amazing. Sorry. Brilliant. Thank, well you done. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to working with you. We can do a lot with that bit, will we? Okay. Thank you. I'm going purely on instinct. I have to say, I am absolutely gutted, gutted that uh, Lana didn't go with me. I thought I offered the most sensible, professional, simple way to get the best capital out of it. And I think, Ranjan, you agreed with me, didn't no, you? No, I didn't. I don't. <laughs> I do not think the best home for this is as a single home. That's because you're obsessed with splitting everything up about <laughs> 55,000 times. It's a very simple deal. It's in a lovely area. It's a very simple deal. These two, these two, in the end, ganged up against me. Helen should have made. And why uh, you didn't don't. offer on that, I don't know, Helen. Uh, I am kicking myself because as soon as Paul said he'd share it with Nick, I'm like, share, oh, right? I should have, I should have done that. I should have explained. I should have explained what sharing meant, and she would have done that. If I had explained yeah. it properly, she thought it was complicated sharing. That's a good point. It, it's not at all. It is complicated I should have sharing. It That's why I don't do it. Good point. That's why I don't share. We, we can sort that stuff out. You know, what I really wanted to give her was an option which let her do exactly what she wanted with some good advice on top, rather than us pushing what we want. Exactly. But we that know, was where but, I was but coming I know what's from best with my on that deal. I know what's best on that deal, and it's not what you're doing. Yeah. Well, that's, my view. that's your opinion. Well, it is my opinion. Let's see my what opinion it sells with 40 years, 43 years experience. So, it, you know, go, <laughs> there's a lot of experience there. Great, so Alana, welcome back. Uh, was it good news, bad news? Very good news. Very good news, great, tell yeah. us more. In total, four offers, wow. three individual offers and one joint offer, um, which is very daunting because uh, it's really difficult to make a choice. So in yeah, the end, absolutely, because they all bring their own positives and their own pluses to, to each deal, don't they? Yep. Yeah. So who did you end up going for? Uh, Nick. Okay. Yep. Really good. Are you happy with your decision? I am because I've acted, I think, on instinct yep. and um, it felt right. Yeah. Um, I think I could have accepted all of the offers, yeah, of I course. really could, but it, in the end you do have to make a choice and it's not easy. Omar, welcome to Property Elevator. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the deal that you've brought for our angels today. I'm here to present a commercial to residential conversion opportunity. Okay. Um, the property is in Bromley in Kent um, and I'm hoping that the, that the angels will like the deal. Great. Uh, you're kind of around that area as well, Correct, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, so it'll be nice and easy to uh, to get to and to keep on top of it, hopefully. That's the plan, exactly, yeah. Good. Is there anyone in particular that you'd like investment from today? Not anyone in particular. I mean, I think um, the Ranjan will hopefully like the deal being yeah. commercial property, yeah. um, but hopefully the numbers will speak for themselves. So we've got Omar coming in first, and I think he was on the live show we did. He was. 
Um, the I'm landlord, sure he was. Yeah, landlord yeah. investor show up, Billingsgate. Yeah. And I think we all wanted to invest in him. I have that a bone day. to pick with him. He rejected us. Yeah. <laughs> he rejected us. <laughs> we don't <laughs> like that, do we? Well, technically, he didn't reject me. Well, of course, he he didn't. no one's you, ever Helen. rejected you, Helen. <laughs> we he didn't know reject that. me either, but you know. <laughs> you weren't there. Oh, that's you, right, yeah. We had to battle on without you, which of course was yeah, tough. It must have been really tough. It was really tough. We missed you. But it went a bit quicker, didn't it, if you remember? So. So let's get Omar in and, uh, and see what he's got this time for us. Omar, thank you very much for coming in today uh, and your presentation, uh, if, if everyone else does such a good one as you do, we'll be, we'll be flying. Um, very impressive presentation um, you've brought us. So um, thank you. Ov over to you. So I'm here today to present a commercial to residential conversion opportunity. Um, I've sourced the property it was actually advertised via the open market. It was a bit of a, a, a tricky situation in that the sellers are trying to wind down a business. And so there are two owners that have been disputing a little bit about when they wanted to wind that business down. Um, there have been offers far in excess of the price I've managed to agree the property uh, for. So this has been, um, uh, the purchase price has been agreed at £800,000, which is to purchase uh, the freehold of the commercial building, which is made up over basement, ground, first, second and loft space. And then to the rear of the building, there is also a detached uh, warehouse unit, which is um, two, over two floors. The opportunity here is to use permitted development rights, um, class G and class M, to create some residential dwellings in the building. Mm -hmm. um, keep the commercial uh, shop frontage, which is currently zone A in a very affluent area with parking right outside the commercial premises, um, find a good tenant. Where, where is it? Um, it's in Bromley in Kent. It's actually in a, a location called Hayes, which is a, quite a desirable part of Bromley. I, I know the area very well, um, went to school in Hayes as well. And so I know I've got a, a very good um, eye on the property prices. Um, in my comparables on the last page, actually, one of those is a property that I sold myself, which was just a, a quick flip that I did uh, for a residential flat. I've put together a pack which demonstrates um, the stages of which this, uh, this investment would work. Obviously, it's got, it's got a permitted development involvement in it, and it's also got full planning, depending on which route I go down. Um, there's potential to title split part of it off and sell it off at auction, which is the more risky part I potentially don't want to be involved in. I've got um, an architect, planning consultant, yeah. um, finance lined up, the full works really. So I invite okay. you to ask questions. Can you just talk us through sure. the proposal if we just stick with the permitted development aspects? Because obviously yeah. that's certain. If you look in the pack, there are, there's option one and option two. Yeah. Option one is the route that I wish to go down, which is just to exploit the permitted development rights. And ultimately, what that will gain is um, it will use class MA to cut the shop in half and create a studio flat at the back of the shop, um, keeping the zone A frontage. And then it will allow class G to create two flats above the shop. One will be a two bedroom, 61 square meter flat, and the other will be a one bedroom, 55 square meter flat. Um, I have explored creating a, th a third flat on the on the top floor, which if you have, if you look at the image of the property, there yeah. is actually a window yeah. up there, and it's full head height. Yeah. But um, that would be a full planning application. So instead, there is potential to put a dormer up there and just add a further bedroom should yeah. the costs stack up to to make the top floor flat a, a split level mason. Okay. Basically. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Can you talk us through the figures then on that option one? Option one, the only way, in my view, the way option one would work is the rear warehouse unit is the, the risky element. It's, um, there's no permitted development rights on, on that particular unit. It would require full planning to convert it into residential. It could be let out to a commercial tenant. So my proposal involves selling the rear warehouse unit at auction with a computer generated image to show the potential of what that unit could be worth. So mm -hmm. to, to sell that bit off, yep. there is also a basement 
under the shop, which is 70 odd square meters. And it has full head height. It's 2.3 meters floor to ceiling head height. Um, and from the rear of the building, you actually access the basement on a, on a, on the straight level because it's, it drops down to the rear. So I, I have had a feasibility study on the basement. Um, the planning consultant felt it would be risky to obtain residential there and he felt the planners wouldn't like it. So, um, the view for the basement is again, to sell that off and to not take the risk of the planning how of much the basement. At auction? I'm a bit of an auction specialist, John. I don't know if you know that already, but I believe well, I you could... Well, you say, you say you are. Okay, yeah. I believe um, I could achieve 100,000 yeah. to sell that at auction with a, a, planning, a pending planning application. Okay. And um, the rear warehouse? The rear warehouse, I believe I could achieve 200,000 with a pending planning application and a nice CGI. So the, the acquisition would be um, 800,000 to purchase, yep. title split two parts, sell them off, uh, bring in 300,000. Um, we would then claim stamp duty sub sale relief to just pay stamp duty on the 500,000, not the eight. I'm not sure that works like that. I've run that past my solicitor and I've done it many times as well. I hear what your solicitor says and he, they, he may be right, but having just had experience of a similar situation, uh, my advice was different to that, but okay. carry on. The stamp it's not, not a lot of No, no that's absolutely that's fine. I think that the intricacies of the stamp duty sub sale relief would depend on the day which completion took place. So the idea here to line it all up would be that the warehouse and the basement would sell on the same day that I would complete on the purchase. And that is how you, you would gain the stamp, uh, stamp duty sub sale relief. The, uh, the idea would be the purchase price would then come at 500,000 for the freehold interest. And you would have the ability to, to create uh, three flats all within the 56 day prior notification period with and no And the resales in those three flats are? 325,000 on the two bedroom first floor flat. Yeah. 300,000 on the top floor flat. That's excluding the, uh, any full planning application on the door mat, the, yep. the, the loft. Yeah. And I believe I've put 200 or maybe, t yeah, I think 200 on the flat at the back. So the ground floor. Is it 250? Yeah, like 250. 250, sorry, 250. 250. That's a 37, yeah. 39 square metre studio at the back. Well, what are you going to spend? 155,000. In total? Yeah. On three, converting three flats? Correct. I run a construction company for a living. Well, you better talk to me afterwards. If you can do that for three, if you can do that for that sort of money, then um, you better come and do some for me. Um, because I think that's light in the present situation. So we're selling off all of it. The uh, the warehouse and the basement on day one of completion. Correct. Yeah. So there's a bridging loan for sixty percent of the purchase price that's yes. left. Yeah. So I guess you're looking for funding for Correct. the forty percent balance. That's and right. also That's what the, the show's about, cost, Ranjan. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's what I'm just clarifying. <laughs> that's what, what the show's for. about. No, we, fund, we fund the deals. No, I know we're funding the deals, but we're trying to clarify how much and the, and, and the portion yeah, no. of the timing, yeah? Fair enough. Um, uh, and uh, that's correct, yeah? I'm looking for 200,000 towards the acquisition, yep. which yep. is the 40% deposit. Yep. Um, I have a bridging provider lined up at 60% loan to value because it's commercial property and there's, there's an element of development. Not being an expert in permitted development rights, can you help me understand why we need options one and two? Option two, the, 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 the basements can't be done under permitted development and, and they are tricky to convert because of light and amenity space and parking and that sort of stuff. So, so there's no PD rights for basements. And the rear warehouse unit, um, it, depending on the use class will depend on whether it would fall under PD or not. And the use class on that particular warehouse doesn't fall under permitted development. So they require full planning, whereas the actual existing envelope of the commercial, uh, commercial building being the back of the shop and the uppers, there are PD rights that you can... Yeah, no, um, I think I get that. But isn't your idea of selling those two things anyway, immediately? Uh, uh, is, in is, option is, two, that, that would be to go for, for full planning for the uh, warehouse unit, which still has a, a very good chance of getting that approved. Um, I have other pending planning applications in Bromley, which um, have taken uh, three months for validation and a, a further three so, months. So is the reason for appalling, two appalling two isn't yeah. it? So we, you, appalling. so we would wait a minimum of six months yeah, to determine whether the warehouse could be developed. And that for me was, and actually the, the, the vendor would be happy for us to 
submit that planning application on exchange of contract. Well, you wouldn't have a choice. Um, they're, they're very happy for us but to But there's do that. no choice. Once but, you've exchanged, yeah. you, can do what, you can do what you can put any application you can put in. in. You can put I can put an application on Buckingham yeah. Palace if I want to. put that in now without exchange. Without, 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 as long as you notify them. Well, it needs a lot of work done. It's the risk element of that planning application being refused. Yes. Which there is, you know, that is the rear of a shop. Um, the saleability of those units as well. And um, someone may look to take that warehouse unit just for storage and that may suit them um, better. I think the other people. thing is, of course, on your figures here, the profit on GDV for option one, which is minimum risk with the PD is 34% and yeah. you're doing 33% on that option two point. with all the yeah. risk. And, and that's why I was saying what's the point in option two. There's just yeah. no yeah. point, yeah. I think, Fair in enough. option yeah. two. Okay. But agree, yeah. it, it's good that you've explored different exits. Yeah. Just a quick technical note on PD. You yes. can do Class MA on basements it's, it, as long as it has natural light. That's the main okay, thing. I it's just that your that. one yeah. is all enclosed, it, so you couldn't. Yeah, I mean, there is a door at the, at the rear, but there's no windows in the, in yeah, the basement. Look so at the floor plan, it wouldn't yeah. work on yours. But <laughs> well, couldn't you, 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 couldn't you put windows yet, in? Not yeah. yet. Sorry? Couldn't you put windows uh, you in? You can't do Press any modifications to the external envelope as okay. part of the PD. Okay. So if it had windows. Yeah, but you could. Can you make the door a window? put the door as a glass door. And then apply for the permitted development. You could do, with but there is, with that door, there just isn't enough. Enough the floor space. Go through. And, you know, and there's also, a formula yeah. of okay. amount of yeah. window to floor space. And, and also, Ranjan, and the other thing that I, I factored in with the basement is, although the floor to ceiling height is there, yeah. it's not ideal at two point three. And ideally, you'd, you'd want to go Dig down the floor a bit, out, yeah. and then you need to tank the whole thing, and there's just the cost would would rack up to actually create create the space there. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But you're getting a decent margin without yes. on option one. Well, that's your, is that your opinion then? Uh, no, on the figures that he's quoted, oh, the right. build cost is another issue yeah. which we'll um, explore in a way. Nicholas, yeah, I you have a few questions. Um, yeah. Why have you gone for, in your plans, uh, just a one bed? You've gone for a sort of 55 square metre one bed on, mm -hmm. I think you said, the first floor? To, uh, minimum space standards for a two bedroom are 61 square metres. So 55 square metres, it's, it's theoretically, it's, they still, it's, I mean, it's, it's big it's, enough, isn't it, to be a two bed, well, but if it's, it doesn't meet the space standards. Yeah. So. Study room? Yeah, but if it's yeah, PD, do you need to meet the maximum space do, yeah. standards on there? No, you do. There are ways of optimising that. Yeah, the architect said actually what would be a good plan would be to have a, a, a small study yes. office space. That's and what, that, I, just, you that's what able, I just said. Correct. You wouldn't yes. be able to list it as a bedroom, but it would technically be a small bedroom. Thank you. Yeah, I've done um, that quite a few but times. And the other option is to add the dormer, which would create the top floor with them becomes yes. 71 yeah. square metres, I believe, split but level. But under planning. But that would require full planning application. But there's no reason why you wouldn't get that, is there? One of the things that uh, filled me with confidence is this is probably one of the only shops within the parade that doesn't have two flats above the existing commercial there. So, so I'm, plenty I'm, of, you yeah, know, I'm plenty of the people have done set. it. It also has its own access from the front. There's a separate door. Um, Great, yeah. Which Essential because you don't want really to come. Good. You don't. You don't want to come come around the back because it's it's a, always a poor. Correct for saleability to yeah. sell these on. It's yeah. appealing, isn't yeah. it, to have your own front much, door? Much, much, much. And, and you said the back does the too. Idea. The back, the the basement, basement uh, from the back the, too. The basement would have the rear access. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So the two flats Sorry. above would be access from the front. Um, the flat at the back of the shop that would have rear access. We have looked at trying to design an access from the front, but it wasn't possible. Talk to me about time scales on yeah. this. So um, I explored the option of exchanging with this delayed completion. Yeah. The, the vendors, um, we've got a very good relationship. I've been in to see them six or seven times now. I know their life story. Um, <laughs> I explored the option of potentially, and they're happy to do this, to give me a key undertaking for works to actually create these flats before I even complete. Um, the solicitors, as always have stuck their oar in and said that um, it would be quite risky for me to potentially do that and also risky for them. So we're, we've been toying with those conversations. So, so obviously it's the 200,000 pound investment that you're yep. looking for. You seem to know this development back to front, which is great. Um, you're experienced. You don't seem to be short of a few Bob. Is it just the money you're looking for from us or is there anything else? Um, I haven't converted a, a commercial property into a residential as of yet. Um, it doesn't scare me. I've done lots of soundproofing and all sorts of complex stuff already. But the idea here would be to get someone who's got some experience in this to hopefully put the funding in and also give me a bit of guidance throughout the, the process. So. All right, cuts it down a bit then. Um. <laughs> Just one final question. Uh, shop's vacant, yeah? 
the whole lot is vac uh, the vacant. The shop will be vacant. At the moment, the sellers are currently trading on the ground floor. It's where they're, they've run a business there for 30 odd years. Yes. So. But it will be sold with vacant Correct. possession. Correct, it will be vacant possession, yeah. Why are they so nice to you? Um, you it's know, not, not everyone's just, like you, Nicholas. Yeah, but I they've, they've, what I don't understand, they've, they've had higher offers, yeah, there's no, all this PD. It's a great right? question. Uh, I'm, I'm it a local, sounds too good to be true. I'm a local lad. They've, had, they've, ha they've actually had offers um, in excess of 100,000 more than mine. Um, those people weren't flexible on the terms. I came in and said, I can be as flexible as you like. Um, you're running down a business. Do you need to stay here for longer? Okay. Do you want me to exchange now and complete in a year or six months or two years? You tell me what the terms are but this is my price. And um, it was advertised by a very well-known estate agent. Um, and they, you know, we spoke about going to the same school together. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. been a, a real good build of rapport. Well done. And, th and that is exactly what investor relations is about. Building that rapport, actually listening to what yeah. they want, asking the right questions yeah. and establishing that trust. It's all had an airing. You've all had chances to uh, ask the right questions. Who would like to go first, whether or not they'd like to work well, I think yeah, I can go pretty quickly. This isn't my area of specialty, so it's not. I'm not. I'm not the investor for you. You missed this, didn't you? You should have bought this yourself, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Your area. I'm still thinking about it. He's not. He's not got it exchanged yet. I'm still thinking about it. You're highly investable. I'd, I would actually love to work with you as a development partner, um, but I think what you need is a constant flow of capital past this deal, um, and there are better people placed that are at that stage in their careers. For me, um, again. Very, very, very uh, investable. Um, I'm not worried about you doing this deal. This is the sort of deal we do all the time. It, you are sweating it hard, which I always concern myself. You know, this PD uh, and whatever Ranjan might say about PD, and I think he will hopefully agree with me that, you know, these councils are now getting sharper. They're getting to understand it better and they all put as, m as many spokes in the wheel as they can to stop it happening sometime. I would want to see it being bought at 700,000, not 800, uh, because there is a risk in, in you getting the 100 and the 200 back and, and the resales. So to de-risk it further for me, I'd want the deal at 700,000. So for me today, it, 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 this one isn't for me today. Thank you. You've you just got to know this stuff, that's all it is. And uh, I don't share these guys' pessimism about PD. I think it's going to take a little bit of time before councils start to understand it enough to hit back. And if you know what you're doing, you will win. I'm very pleased by the way you've answered a lot of the questions, yeah. because there are a lot of nuances in the PD which your planning consultants have advised you correctly on. I think you're very investable. I'd like to work with you. I'm just going to offer you a very simple and fair offer, which is to offer you the equity money that you need for a 50-50 uh, split. That's on the basis of we cap the building cost to what you've put in your estimate. Um, and um, on, on the basis of doing option one. So um, I'd be happy to work with you. Thank you. All right, so that's one offer you got. Congratulations. Helen? As the guys have said, super investable. I was really gutted that we didn't get to do a deal at the live back in October. You don't hold grudges though, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no. no of course uh, you don't. I mean, this is ticking so many of my boxes. The risk mitigation that you've done, you've answered every question. It's so thorough. This is an exemplary pack. So I am happy to match Ranjan's offer. Okay, oh. excellent. Um, up to you to decide what you'd like to do. Thanks very, um, for the opportunity, I appreciate it all, and um, you're all an inspiration. Um, on this occasion, I'd like to take Ranjan up um, on his offer. Congratulations, Brilliant. well done. Well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. We can hug now. <laughs> Hugely um, investable. Yeah. Um, really investable. I'm a very, yeah. very, very decent man. Very investable. Uh, yeah, I've got I it. was a bit concerned about the resale put values. Um, and the PD thing, I hear what you say, and you're the expert on PD, Ranjan, but... He'd already discounted the... He'd taken 10% off the resale values already, though, so they weren't... No, they so weren't. So he runs an estate agency, so I, I do expect his uh, resale values are reasonably well thought. One thing about... What's the one thing uh, about estate agencies, estate agents? 
They're all optimistic. They're all optimistic. Every morning, they pull the curtains back in their bedroom and it's a sunny day. <laughs> and that's, well, that's, that's to be right. John, they sell you. I, John. I, I get that. Don't you run a locations. series of estate yeah, agents? I do. Uh, and yeah, I know, I employ them all. I know what they're like. The thing is, the, the location is good. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's in a cracking location. The entry is from the front. And the layout yeah. of the flats is good, yeah. which mm. will help the resale the front, value. The front is also the key, and the fact that you're an experienced the PD. And I thought, Paul, you were very honest and said, look, it's not really your bag. Well, what um, he was looking for, I, I, I can't offer him, so no. there's no point messing about. So, how'd you get on? Yeah, really well, thank you. Good. Um, I managed to get two offers from the Angels, uh, Helen and Ranjan. So I did do the deal with Ranjan. Yeah. I'm um, very pleased. I got the full funding Excellent. I was looking for. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Craig, welcome to Property Elevator. Thank you very much for having me. I can uh, detect a little accent there. Where yes, are you so from? from South Wales. Okay, and do you live there and invest yeah, there? Yeah, I live in Vesta, yeah. Obviously, I've done a few projects in London as well. Okay. And Cambridge. Brilliant. So I travel about. Great. Tell us a little bit about your background then in property. Back on basically I was 16, 17 years now in construction. Um, started my own business two years ago. So how much investment are you after today then? The land itself is up for 190,000. Obviously if the investors come in on that, obviously we could get the development fund from the back of that. Or if they want to just fund the whole deal, it's 550,000 then for the development costs. Yep. On top of the 190 for the land. So Brilliant. Yeah, there's, that's the deal. Is it, and is what's there. your expected GDP? GDV is around about 1.25 to 1.3 million. Okay. So there's a nice, uh, nice yeah. amount in the pot there. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah, thank you very I'll, much. Uh, I'll speak to you when you get out. Thank you. Cheers. Speak to you soon. Thanks. Craig, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank um, you. We're all intrigued to know where this deal is. If you can tell us all about it, that'd be great. Well, my name's Craig. Obviously, I've come from South Wales. This deal is actually in Pontypridd, which is about 10 minutes from uh, Cardiff City Centre. Um, it's in Trialo, it is the village of Trialo. The land itself is 190,000. Development costs are going to be around 550,000. And the GDV is 1.29. And what do you do yourself? Are you a full time? Well, person? 16, 17 years now in construction. Uh, two years ago, I took the jump and actually set my own business up. Got a couple of boys on board with me, and we've been doing over the last, say, 12 to 16 months. We've done five renovations. We're on the fifth one now. I'm just looking at some of the costs here. Um, we've got a lot of itemization on some of the finance costs, even down to telegraphic yeah. transfer fees of thirty pounds, <laughs> which is very Try nice. Trying to be to a bit know. thorough, just very for professionally um, light detail. Light just, detail. I just wanted a bit more uh, breakdown of the overall build cost, I guess, of uh, five hundred fifty thousand pound. What, what? Yeah, what obviously, of that? we're looking at around about hundred thousand per bungalow. That's with a contingency, and then obviously the, the infrastructure would be the remaining. Obviously, my background is groundworks and civils, yep. so the infrastructure is a massive cost to most sites. Yep. But with my expertise and obviously the boys I've got around me as well, exactly. we can keep that cost right it's down there. And what stage is this at? Have you found this site? Um, have you secured planning? I found this site back in November 2019. Obviously, it did get involved. I looked at the planning myself. For the experience I got, um, I thought there may changes could be made because it was a f originally it was four bed, two three beds, and a two bed. Well, obviously I've now increased that per, house, per bed per house, so there's now five bed, two four beds, and a three bed. Obviously got into the attic space and, and done it that way because the, the guy I bought the land off the vendor, he's took it off the market for me. Uh, I put in, it was up for two hundred twenty thousand. I got him down to one hundred ninety. And then I asked him if he could take it off the market so I could spend some time on it, which I've spent nearly a year on it. Is there a particular reason why you've gone for bungalows as opposed to two-story houses? That was what the original planning was. I didn't want to go back in again for other planning. Bungalows will sell well in Wales. They're a really good thing to have in Wales, to be honest. Five bedroomed bungalows, I take it there's a chalet bungalow. I'm taking that they're, I'm assuming that they're, they're actually two-story houses really because they're in, they're in the eaves. The, the bedrooms are Story in the eaves and a half is classed. Story and a half, yeah. Yeah, but the problem we've got is because the planning was declined originally yep. by the by the original yep. vendor, he's eventually got it five years later. But the, the big thing on the planning was because his neighbours just below 
Yeah. There was the overlook in their garden. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So now we've had to change it. So the attic bedrooms, the windows will be on the back. Yeah. So, so they won't actually no look overlooking. at the front. And how many Just bedrooms are there upstairs? One bedroom upstairs. Okay, so so they really are quite big bungalows, aren't they? Is that the optimum size, do you think? Or do you think you can build smaller to get a better return on your money? Or do you think that's about right? It's, it's about right, to be fair. It's like obviously, you, you're paying out for the materials and, and stuff anyway. You're, you're not saving that much. And because I'm getting so much material, I'm having it cheaper anyway. And they're four, so in total, the square footage is roughly 6,000 you're building, something like that? Something like that, yeah. There is another plot of land to the side of this as well. Yeah. Which is, it's, it's actually up here. Yep. And it's pretty much the same size as this, but right. the planning's on this at the moment. Okay. So we've got purchase price of 190, mm -hmm. build cost of 550 plus the finance cost. Am I right in saying that you're looking at putting in a deposit toward the, 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 the land and financing the balance. Is that right? That was well, my original plan. Okay. But obviously now I've been invited to the show. Okay. So I you'd like maybe, the 190 from us? Yes. Or I assume you'd be open oh, to financing yeah, it if exactly. it's available. Like yep. If you put okay. half the money in and we get the other half on bridging or, or, and then we get the development finance then, off the back of that. And then the bill costs plus the other costs being a, you know, just shy of 600 grand or thereabouts. Hmm. Uh, were, were you going to finance that as well? Development finance. Yeah, okay. All right, so you need about 30% of that yeah. also. Okay, do you have your own funds or are you looking for the whole lot from us? Uh, to be fair, if, if I could get the funds from yourselves because I'll be building it, I'll, like, I'll need the cash flow to, to start the site, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Because okay. But obviously I could do, do either option, but the easier option for me and going forward into other deals would be for you to fund it. And, then and, and the bill cost, right, so just did some rough numbers there, you know, about £6,000 a square foot. Um, 550 cost, which works out at about 90 pounds a square foot. Seems very light to me for a new build, but is that most, is that, are you confident in I that do, figure? Yeah, and I could probably get the numbers down again. Uh, uh, not much more, but I could squeeze them numbers a bit more with materials as well, because I'm, I'm in and out of builders merchants every day, so I can get these materials right down low. Obviously, they still got to make their profit margins, but. What are your comparables for, I'm trying to assess kind of how realistic the GDV is, what are your comparables on these? Right, well, what I've done, I've spoke to three different estate agents. Um, they've given me three separate numbers, so I've basically gone in the middle with it. Um, I've also looked at, they've sent me what they've actually sold. So they have sold a three-bed bungalow for 300000 Great. in the last couple of months. So I was like, okay, that's, that's comfortable there. And that's where I built the price from now then, basically. Okay, great. The, the Wales is selling quite well. It's, it's, it's going, as probably John probably knows anyway. And who do you see the target market being for? You know, obviously it's bungalows. Do you see that as kind of older people, or do you see it as families, or it, both? Realistically, mm -hmm. it could be like an older older couple that's going to downgrade to the three bed. Yeah. You know, and obviously a family could live on the end of five bed. It's a nice little estate. To the side of it is an old old people's home, like a caring home. How much of your time will you be able to divide to building these sites? Because all of it. Are you sure? Because yes. you know, if this takes how long to build? Twelve months. This is a twelve-month project. Yeah, you eighteen have, months. You won't have any cash flow for twelve months, and probably another six months after that. So, do you have enough personal cash flow to manage yourself cash flow-wise for eighteen months? For well, you know, for if you have months. to stop, if you have to stop. Well, yeah, because business. I've obviously got other jobs coming on. Oh no, obviously got this big development starting in two weeks' time. That's what I mean. So you're so going to not do those? You said you're doing this slightly time. different setup with that. All the materials paid for on that. Yeah. I just rock up and do the job. Because I'm working alongside the investor. Yep. I've done a renovation for him already. Um, How long will that take to do? Uh, the renovation's a week away from finishing. Oh, right. So we'll be starting his office space in London. And, and we'll how long will that take? That's a nine month project, but I'm looking to expand out. This is why I'm, I'm mm. here as well. You see, what worries me is that it's like all of us, really. We're all, we're all considered uh, small companies. And, it, and it's the one, per, you know, if it's, they all want to speak to Nicholas or they want to speak to Helen, or they want to speak to me, they want to speak to Ranjan, Paul, you know, and yourself and take you out of that because you're busy 200 miles away and, and the whole no, thing this, can this, get this, a bit. I won't be, I said, I, yeah. my focus will be on this. I'd be a bit of project managing between two sites, yeah. but I've got okay. some fantastic boys working for yeah. me. No, that's fine. And they, they can more I wish you'd, I wish you'd price the ten, nine, nine flats, with, six flats and three houses we're doing in Cardiff, because I tell you what, <laughs> come out a lot more than your figures, and, that, and that's just a conversion. But anyway. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely be speaking to you about our next conversion. Nicholas? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested. I don't think you fully answered Ranjan's question about the build costs uh, at sort of uh, in a hundred thousand a bungalow is extremely light. Um, I appreciate you can do all the groundworks and that cheaply but with materials as they are. Have you have you got any more detail around that figure? Have you had a QS report done for uh, the QS report? Come in hi. So I went out myself it's and went realistic. specifically in the builders merchants and go right. What are you going to charge me? Okay. I've got all the lists of materials and going right. This okay. is what I want. And Great. This is the price. It's roughly coming in at around about sixty to sixty-five thousand per bungalow. The labour, what, who, you know, my boys. Everyone's my boys. So the they're full time for you. Full time on my books. Are they PAYE or are they? Yes, PAYE. They're under CIS construction no, industry no. scheme. They're under PAYE. PAYE. The only person I bring in on CIS is electrician. I'm struggling, um, Craig, to quantify your bill costs, and I know you can. I know, you know, over forty odd years, I've had many, many. Builders, not always as sharp as you, uh, or as good as you, I'm sure, say to me, I can do this for this, John, and then we've had, a, uh, we've had problems. Um, and my worry, my worry, um, is that the bill cost price is just so low. I know it's Wales, and I'm not being rude to Wales, but I think no, no, labour is probably cheaper than it is in London and so on, and all this. it's cheaper to live in I'd Wales. I'd just like to say that I've tried to keep the cost at such a point, because I'm going to be making money on the back end of this yeah, deal. Yeah, no, no, no. And I'm, I'm keeping it to the I'm point where delighted. I'm just about making money yeah. on the front end. Yeah, Obviously, from my experience of pricing jobs up over yeah. the last year, 18 months yeah, now. Yeah, and I'm absolutely delighted that, that you've taken that attitude. It's brilliant, and, it, and it's very refreshing. Um, but that, that's my, that's really my, my right. own concern. But let's just go around and see what uh, everyone else thinks. So, Paul, what's your view on it? Well, yeah, you uh, look, you know, as, as we've discussed, usual price of square foot for a new build is about £200 a square foot at the moment. So I know I get, obviously, there's at least 30% in that for you. Uh, but I struggle to see how there's 60% in that for you. I know you've really tried to drive it down, but you know, if, if it is 200 pounds, let's say it's 180 a square foot, that wipes out the profit. So that's the difficulty I'm having with the numbers. I can appreciate what you're saying on that. I, I genuinely I can, but obviously through my experience, and obviously I would not put that on the piece of paper if I didn't No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not questioning your integrity that's, whatsoever. That's, that's um, honestly, I've looked at these numbers for, for over a year now and I've got it down to a point where I'm comfortable putting on a piece of paper and bringing it in front of you. Mm. If you, it turns out you actually can't do it for this for whatever reason, then you're going to be quite upset about that because it's going to start eating into your returns. I have no doubt that I can do it for that price. Okay. That's, that's obviously... Well, it. I will uh, just say that I think you're incredibly investable. Mm -hmm. This is just not my bag. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's the only reason why I'm no, out. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. Anything. Thank you. Uh, to the project apart from money. Very, very investable. Um, love to do something with you, especially in Wales. Mm, um, but I think on this one, I'm just going to, I'm just going to step, step away from it. My biggest worry you're going to have is with the bank not believing you. Now that sounds crazy, but a bank will get a QS in and go, oh, well, it's going to be this much. Yeah. And, and so funding it on that basis yes. could be a bit tricky. W what it is, is that then... If I fail, they've got to get somewhere else. That's exactly it, what it is. Yeah, they've exactly. got to price yeah. it on a full yeah. cost. And you're on the ball, you know the school. Yeah. So, so yeah. But, um, thank you for coming in today, but, but this one's not for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For me, Craig, I'd love to work with you. Um, I think you're aware of that. Definitely. Yeah. I can definitely help you with this, but it's not an investment for me today. Oh, sorry. I don't think I can earn enough return from it, but if you want to look me up again after this, if you need some help, yeah, definitely. Um, I can definitely help you with it in other ways. So, yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, happy thank to you very continue much, the conversation offline. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, I'm with the, the guys on this one. It's not for me today, but I really want to watch what you do, how you get on with this. So, not for me today, but I'm really keen to watch thank how you, you get on. Appreciate that. So Craig, um, thank you so much for coming. I thank do you. really appreciate it, as we all do. And mm -hmm. um, uh, please do come back no, as well. That's definitely. the other thing I would say. And I'm sure, you know, now we've we've all met you, uh, Nicholas, and you partly already. Then I'm sure um, there'll be business to be done outside the 100%. room, if not yeah. in the room next time. 100%. Thank you very yeah, thank much. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks, thank you, Craig. I think that's the most impressive guy I've seen that did not get an offer. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I just really, really frustrating because I think um, I've been in the situation so often when 
you know, over the years when builders have said they can do this for that and everything else. And, you know, he's so determined yes. and I'm sure he would do it, but it would be out of his own money to make it work yes. rather than, mm -hmm. so, so not to let you down. And yeah. that's not we're, what we're about. We're not no. about trying to rip people off, none no. of us are, or ever have been, I know. And I just felt that I could, I could have said yes very easily, as I'm sure we all could have done really to the deal. But I just felt I'm actually probably doing him a disservice by saying yes, almost. So Craig, how did we get on? Unfortunately, I didn't get the deal. Okay. But it was a great experience and I'm, I'm honoured to be here. So yeah, not to be disheartened by it all. I'll still continue with the deal. They obviously didn't like the fact that the, the development costs were a little bit lower and a little bit tighter than they would like it to be. Obviously, okay. if the QS was to look at it yep. or the banks, then they might not actually accept it. So right. that was the only reason really. I had some good feedback from them all. Good. I'm just glad I've been here. So. Good. So you're yeah. going to continue on with the deal then? 100 percent Yeah. 100%. Excellent. All right. Well, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. Thank and you. Uh, keep in touch. And I'm sure there'll be more deals to be done in the future with them all. You will be too. Yeah. You'll be seeing me again as well. Good. Thank Hope you. so. Well, what an amazing first day we've had here. Commercial to residential seems to be a really popular strategy, and the angels have loved it. That's all we've got time for today. We'll see you next time on Property Elevator. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property.